Get your piss filter out of here, you filthy clanker. Where is the soul of the art? Where is the effort? Pick up your damn pencil. I've seen countless efforts to ridicule or undermine generative AI images or videos online, from mindless AI Facebook engagement baits to actual billion dollar corporations using Gen AI videos as a cinematic trailer. As you can see, Gen AI is now being used to make content at every level, from individuals with an idea to something as big as Riot Games. For now, we are in a transitional era where it's still possible for the keen eye to tell what's AI art and what's not. Details like merged fingers, incorrect anatomy, and questionable artistic visions still occur in some rudimentary local image generation models. The more popular and accurate models, such as the one in ChatGPT, is rather impressive in terms of how accurate it is, but it has a distinctive yellow tint that gives it away easily. With newer, better, and more unrestricted models all coming up recently, how should we, the common people, understand and approach Gen AI content? How can we deal with harmful content such as deepfakes and meaningless, sensational content directed towards children? Is this the end game? Is our unique creativity going to be obtained by machines and we as humans lose our value? Here are the questions I'd like to discuss today. To begin with, I'm sure you recognize these names. Now you can create videos or images using their closed source models, but if you tell ChatGPT to make explicit content or produce a comic or a meme with offensive ideas, it will refuse to comply with your request. There's varying degrees of censorship. For example, Grok in general is less censored, you know, just look at Annie. But for bad actors, and by that I mean people who want to make fake content that sways public opinion or make deepfakes, they are less likely to use these corpo models because of their controlled nature. Images generated in Gemini or Imagine, yes that's what they call it, there's a watermark on the bottom right corner. I hope all the corpo image models adopt this. It will definitely not stop malicious AI content outright but it will be a good barrier to entry that stops the less determined individuals. Moreover, having that watermark gives context on who made the image and what their message is. There's really nothing more to talk about for closed source models. They are state of the art, the most powerful, and they have restrictions. That's it. So now that we know closed source AI can't really make content that's malicious, how are AI deepfakes or other harmful stuff made? The answer is open source local AI. Some examples of them are listed here. The fact that it's open source means that anyone with enough hardware power can modify and distribute the model. Local means that the model can be run locally, so you don't have to go on OpenAI or Google or whatever to run it. You just need your computer. It sounds amazing, right? You are free from the relentless grip of the trillion dollar corporations and you own the piece of technology that you wish to use. It sounds great until you realize that most people use these open source models because they are uncensored, not because they're willing to take a quality hit to give the finger to the big rich man. And I'm really holding back my language here. By uncensored, I mean deep fake adult content. Why you should date an Asian. Instead of being hoes, we're in the kitchen. Instead of arguing or yelling, we're submissive. And we have the tightest, warmest hugs ever. Hey, it's me from the future editing the video. So obviously I can't show you the explicit content on YouTube, but what I've shown you are Instagram accounts that post AI content to lure people to click on their OnlyFans link tree on their bio. Of course, uh, the content in the OnlyFans are going to be AI as well. So that's certainly one way of using AI to make money. And now I know it's a rough segue, but let's get back to the video. Scams using face swaps, oppressive governments making propaganda, and so on. There's now even speech video models that create things like this. I've been making this dish for 20 years, and every time, the flavor is subtly different. It's not just food. It's my most sincere expression of the season and the land. Imagine that someone is making an AI-generated video of Trump convincing your granddad to invest in his new crypto coin. Wouldn't that be great? At this point, you may think, well, if these open source models are so powerful and so unrestricted. How about we restrict them with laws and bans? Well, here's the neat part. 
They are open source. Anyone can store, change, and run them, so you can't really do anything. At the time of writing the script, the face recognition requirement to watch, well, adult content has been put into place. Now, I live in a place where I don't experience it, but I do use a VPN, and it's quite funny to see the prompt that requests me to provide my so-called wanking license. The intention behind the face ID is definitely a discussion for another time. What I want to focus on is the irony of it all. Currently, the internet has not been more censored. While it has never been easier to create malicious content using open source AI video and image models, Yes, they're weaker than the best closed source models, and so maybe the deepfakes aren't as convincing for now, but you gotta understand, this technology thing, it improves over time, and open source models are not an exception. The best local open source video model, WAN 2.2, looks amazing, and honestly it's a technological masterpiece. It looks so good and it can be run on consumer hardware, even my mid-range PC can run it. It all sounds great until you find out that the video model is also without guardrails. So, all of the benefits of this technology suddenly become double-edged swords. Better video quality means that the deepfakes will look more natural. It being able to run on consumer hardware means that the barrier to creating malicious content is lowered. And since it's uploaded to Hugging Face, there's no way to restrict the distribution of the model. While the bigger Gen AI companies can get sued with copyright infringement issues or get held back by certain guidelines, it seems that smaller companies, sometimes from other countries, don't really concern themselves with these things. Ask anyone with experience in running local AI models, and they'll gladly tell you how uncensored DeepSeek is, especially when compared to things like GPT OSS. So by that logic, there's really no point in holding AI companies back with any reason at all. Yes, Google or OpenAI may be stopped by regulations, other AI companies from other countries will not. And so, whatever the regulations are trying to prevent, it will only happen later, when the open source catch up to Google or OpenAI, or Grok, whatever. The question really isn't if it's too late to stop Gen AI. There really isn't a question anymore. Open source AI models will keep evolving, be it images, audios, text, or videos, and bad actors will be able to create more and more convincing malicious content. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that I've only been talking about the worst of the worst kind of Gen AI content. Deepfakes, scams, and so on. I'm arguing against unrestricted Gen AI. Not because I'm a big fan of restricting personal freedom, but because Gen AI is too powerful when it's let loose. But let us move away from the realm of undeniably malicious AI content. You know, everyone knows they're evil. And let's move on to something tamer. AI art. I do realize that a lot of people online have a really strong hatred on AI art. And I'm not an artist, okay, but I see where it's coming from. Having a skill that you spent your life perfecting slowly fade into irrelevance is soul-crushing. And I think that goes without saying, right? Any person with an ounce of empathy can understand that. But here's what I would argue. AI images are fine as long as they're tagged properly. Ideally, these images should be contained in specific platforms, like Civit AI. These are websites that exclusively contain AI images and nothing else. That way, AI images will not pollute the sites where real brick-and-mortar artists post their work. It's also important to distinguish between the technology and the user. I've seen some really disturbed and crazy individuals train a specific AI model to replicate a certain artist's art style and then undercut the original artist's commissions. And that is simply unacceptable. That is some insane degenerate behavior that nobody in the world can defend. But if you're just generating some images for fun, if you're using the AI models to learn more about how it works, if you just want to remove the trash can in your selfie, there's really nothing too reprehensible in those actions. You see, it's not the technology that's evil, it's always the person using it that is. Understanding that would be paramount to having a civil discussion, because I've seen way too many times how extreme people can get about AI art. Oh, everyone defending AI art loves lollies! On the internet, it's really easy to group people into a monolith, and then attack every single person in that community. We need to understand that Gen AI is just a piece of technology, and liking it or not doesn't tell you much about a person. 
everybody is different in their own ways, and they do not fit perfectly into certain stereotypes. So yeah, if a person is using an uncensored open source AI model to generate images, there's a chance they're doing something fishy. But it's not a 100% chance. And in the age of range baiting, engagement maxing social media platforms, we gotta be less extreme. So if you're arguing against someone who thinks that Gen AI can replace artists, don't assume that they're a pedophile. Instead, argue logically and be polite. And maybe tell them that, oh, human artists and Gen AI models do different things. Now maybe tell them that, hey, no matter how good AI models get, drawing is still fun and interesting to certain groups of people. Lastly, I want to talk about whether Gen AI models steal. It's a very touchy subject. To be honest, I don't know if it's stealing or not. The answer to that question depends entirely on the definition of stealing. Now, I'm not a law student or lawyer, so I don't really have the definition for stealing. Instead, I think using an example to illustrate it would be the best. Let's say there's a bakery. A guy walks in there, picks up a blueberry bagel, and then leaves without paying. That's stealing, right? So there's some key points in that series of action. The bakery needs to lose the blueberry bagel, and that guy needs to get exactly that bagel. In the event of an AI model making an image, firstly, the authors of the data used in training lose nothing. The images that the artists have put online are still there. Secondly, the AI-generated image is not a replica of any of the original images, and therefore, they cannot replace the original images made by artists. Some people say that these AI models just collect images and slap them together, but I'd advise those people to understand how these models work. This video by Welch Labs shows the process, and boy is it complicated. There's factors, clip encoders, entropy, etc. The logic behind these models are sophisticated, combined with the fact that no images are lost and only new images that are not replicas are created, it is really, really hard to say that these models are stealing. Let's do a thought exercise. Hypothetically, there is an image model that's trained on two images, an image of a dog and an image of a rainbow. And then you tell the AI model to make a rainbow dog. And there it is, a rainbow dog. It's derivative work, it's transformative, and it's in no way able to replace the original images of rainbows and dogs. If these models committed a crime, it is certainly not the same crime that the guy with the blueberry bagel committed. However, I'm not saying that AI models are completely moral. Even if the texts or the images used in training were posted in the public and can be copied and seen by anyone, it doesn't mean that the authors consent to their data being used to train AI models. It's a really easy concept to think about. For anything posted before 2022, the concept of an image generating model is not really widely known. And therefore, it's impossible to know whether the authors of the data consent to it being used for training. Now, should the authors be compensated? Morally, yes. Realistically, no. There are billions of people posting things online, and it's logistically impossible to compensate for them all. And really, going back to the last point I mentioned, there's no use in asking for consent if certain AI companies don't do it. If OpenAI suddenly curates a dataset containing only ethically collected data, their models are going to drop in performance, and people are simply going to flock to other AI companies. There's basically no way of stopping progress at this level. In summary, what I've said is that AI cannot be stopped because there are too many companies from different countries. Stopping one organization doesn't stop the other. In addition, what Gen AI does doesn't technically fit into what the general public thinks as stealing. Even if the companies want to give out compensation to the author of the data used in training, it's impossible to do so because there are way too many authors out there. And really, how could you know how much each author has contributed to the AI model? Not doable. Now that sounds extremely grim. What I basically said is that you can do nothing about Gen AI. Nonetheless, I would still like to remind you how useful all this stuff is. AI videos can be made to make humorous skits. LLMs can be used to summarize lengthy texts. I'm sure most uni students have tried using some AI tools to process readings and realize how much more digestible it becomes. 
Better text-to-speech models may be used to help people who have lost their voice to get back their ability to communicate like a typical person. At the end of the day, these Gen AI models are tools, and they are just like all tools. What they do depends on how the user uses it. Deepfakes, scams, using images without permission were definitely things that happened before the proliferation of Gen AI. These AI models have only helped us to do things faster. These things, they may be AI-generated OnlyFans models that are made to exploit and make money off of lonely people. They may also be a helpful study tool that makes mnemonics so that you can study quicker. Although Gen AI is very efficient, it's not really doing too many new things. And I especially don't see how ChatGPT can somehow take over the world when it fails to do basic math if its thinking toggle is off. So we need to stay vigilant and do what we always have been doing. That means being polite in discussions and identifying extreme opinions online, checking the sources of videos and images to see if they're real and what's the context behind them, and most importantly, touching grass. The internet is a very radicalized and dramatized place. It is done so intentionally by engagement maxing algorithms that exploit the negativity bias that we all have. Once you go out and talk to people in real life, you'll find out that we are more alike than we're different. Thank you for watching.